Good morning, everyone, and thank you very much for joining me. This is the morning market review, and it is a big part of Monday of Sarasin here Tuesday. My apologies. It's Monday, the 6th of November, 2023. Uh, my name is Russell Shaw, I'm a senior market specialist at FXM, and my email address is rshaw at fxm.com. If anyone would like to correspond with me, that's the address to use. Let's just go ahead and bring up the disclaimers. We'll start off with the high risk investment warning and I'll keep this on screen for a few moments. Good morning to you Kim, welcome and thank you for signing in. Good morning David, Richard and Raj, welcome and uh, thank you very much for signing in. Good morning to everyone for joining this morning. I'm just going to bring up our market commentaries disclaimer. All right, and just our references Market Scope 2.0 and Trading View. Hey, James, good morning to you. Uh, let's just go ahead and take a look at the real interest rate that's where we usually start but we shall uh, need to uh, reference Friday's uh, non-farm payroll uh, I'm sure you all saw the non-farm payroll came in uh, a lot lower than anticipated uh, 178,000 expected 150,000 being printed and the previous print uh, being revised downwards to 297 Interestingly, the average hourly earnings coming in at 0.2% month on month, which is lower than the anticipated 0.3%. And the unemployment rate moving up to 3.9%. So by and large, uh, a week, a weaker than anticipated, weaker than expected, a non-farm employment change. Hey Howard, morning to you. Welcome. Um, all right, so if we go through to, let's just go through to the one hour and you can see here is the um, non-farm payroll coming in. It really just uh, pushes the real rate down. If we go through to our weekly, I think this is quite fascinating. Uh, remember how we started, remember how we started the analysis? We started the analysis with uh, the RSI and the failure swing. So if we put in the uh, peak. Uh, let me just make this black. We're putting the peak over there. Uh, we're putting the trough right here. Okay, once we got the references in, uh, we said there's going to be a lower peak. We said there was a lower peak. And once we had that lower peak, once we took out the previous trough, or that was the completion of the failure swing. And the failure swing uh, is really um, an indication of a reversal. It's never used in isolation. Okay? It's never never, never in, in isolation. And um, we want to see if there are other signals that um, uh, correspond and uh, sort of just uh, re-emphasize what the failure swing is telling us. Um, I think that the idea of a crossover here is something for us to keep an eye on. Uh, the crossover, let me just bring this to the front. Uh, the crossover of the green five-week exponential moving average crossing below the orange 10-week exponential moving average, that would be uh, the next, um, I think, uh, indicator from um, that would be the next indicator signal but let's take away the indicators we actually have a very powerful price confirmation here and what's that uh, powerful price confirmation that's the reference candle reversal and we've been looking at the reference candle reversal as well it completed last week so if we take out the EMAs you can see that the candle from two weeks ago is a reference candle it's got 
the highest high in at least a three candle cluster. The candles to the left and the right of it have lower highs, have lower highs, right? And then, uh, yes, the, um, I think when last week, we've got the confirmation we closed really right down, right down below the reference candles low. And um, I think there is some um, uh, emphasis uh, or um, uh, corroboration of what that failure swing was suggesting. Isn't that interesting? So we got the failure swing setting up just before the um, all important uh, jobs data and the jobs data kind of now coming through in the price signal and we're getting the uh, the real, real yield coming down. So then the question is to ask, what is that telling us? Because we've been using the real yield as our starting point to get information, right? So what is, well, the real yield seems to be US dollar um, supportive when it's going up. Um, it's got a positive correlation. So if the real yield's coming down, we would expect the US dollar to be coming down. So we'll take a look at that. What would we expect in terms of the risk market? Well, there, there's an inverse correlation. We'd expect the uh, coming down of the real yield to really be supporting uh, the risk on markets such as stocks. So let's take a look at that. See if our hypothesis is playing out, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at the US dollar first. And you can see that we've got the um, reference candle. You've got the reference candle here. Um, here's the candle that's got the highest high in at least a three candle cluster. And um, the candles to the left and the right of it have lower highs. And then last week's candle was just really coming down and pushing below this reference candles low. Uh, it is above that 30-week moving average. We just want to watch that. The 30-week moving average is still moving up, but the slope of that 30-week moving average has um, flattened somewhat. And if you take a look at the RSI, the RSI is heading to uh, is heading towards the to the 50. Okay, so we're getting towards that 50. And if we cross below it then the RSI is getting below um, the uh, positive side. If it's going on to the berry side of the indicator, what is price confirmation? We just, we get, uh, so James is asking, what is price confirmation? Price confirmation, uh, price is moving in a direction that's similar to what we were expecting giving the failure swing, right? So we start, and the price confirmation is important. Probably, so, some would argue that's the primary signal. Right, we we kind of working backwards. We looked at the failure swing first, got the primary sig uh, the pr the price signal thereafter. Um, okay, um, so for us that 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 failure swing I think was quite a quite an interesting setup, wasn't it? Um, does that answer your question, James? I'm not sure if I've answered adequately or not. Just let me know. Uh, but you can see that the um, US dollar here has really pushed pushed right down. And um, if we go through to our daily chart, this is where it really gets interesting because you can see how it's pushed, um, it's really capitulated into zone three, really pushed into that zone three area. Zone three is between that lower blue and the lower red, okay? But uh, it's not only that we're pushing into zone three. Take a look at the red Bollingers. What's happening here? The red Bollinger, the upper red Bollinger is starting to look at the, uh, is starting to push upwards. And what's the lower Bollinger starting to do? It's starting to push downwards, starting to push downwards. Okay, so um, we're getting this expansion in volatility as we get a really meaningful candle pushing into zone three. So lots of weakness starting to potentially manifest on the US uh, dollar. So should we look for USD pairs shorts? Well, uh, not necessarily looking for shorts. If the US dollar is coming down, one would expect Euro US dollar to be moving up, 
Okay, that would be on the long side. One would expect cable pairing to be moving up. That would be that would be on the long side, right? It's not not the US dollars coming down. Okay, but if the US dollars come down, we would expect strength in the other major pairings, wouldn't we, Kim? So not necessarily short, not necessarily short. Okay. Now uh, it's a good question. I think the way to answer that is to take a look at the euro US dollar, take a look at uh, pound US dollar, and see what the um, what the charts are telling us. Okay. Um, just remember, before we do that, US dollar on the daily chart really has pushed quite savagely into zone three, and we've got this uh, movement now for the RSI below 50. Playing out, playing out quite linearly, where did we start? We started with the failure swing, failure swing pre, uh, preempted the non-farm payroll, non-farm payroll, got that price confirmation, James, and then that's all now flowing through to US dollar and other instruments. Let's take a look, say, at uh, Euro, US dollar. Let's see what's happening there, okay? All right, take a look. This is the daily chart. Mm, I'm just thinking we should start with a weekly here. I think we should start with a weekly here. Um, let's take this out. I think it's going to confuse the situation. Yeah, what we're doing is we're getting the lead off of the real rate. Um, I would suggest. So this is what we call, this is actually what we call a complex reference candle. It's a complex reference candle. Um, the complexity of the reference candle is that uh, here's the reference candle, but it actually takes a number of candles before we actually break it above relevant highs, which is again last week, okay? And um, it's now challenging this 30-week exponential moving average. The 30-week exponential moving average has flattened and it's looking like the euro US dollar is going to move above that 30 week exponential moving average. Take a look at the, the weekly RSR starting to pop 50. Now, uh, we just got to monitor this. Okay, see if the uh, moving average provides some sort of resistance. See if the RSI can hold above 50. If it can hold above 50, then I would suggest that we're getting that positive momentum behind euro US dollar. Um, it's not. Uh, absolutely clear on the weekly chart at the moment, although there are hints of positivity. There are hints of positivity here. Let's just go to the daily. I've just got a comment from Kim. I just want to have a read here. When the price breaks the lower red boundary, it tends to move into the meat of the zone. Well, I would agree with that, Kim. The reason is because it's showing an expansion of volatility. That's what it's telling us. The, the Bollinger Bands in of itself, one of the um, components of the calculation of Bollinger Bands is actually standard deviation. Standard deviation is all about measuring volatility. So it's an expansion of volatility that we're seeing. Um, what you can see here, conversely, if you take a look at this on the euro, it's breaking the upper uh, Bollinger, isn't it? So we've, as you say, we're kind of moving into the meat of the zone, isn't it? So there is a real positivity on the... Um, on the euro, uh, again, what I'm going to highlight here is the uh, Bollinger's pushing outwards. So you can see that as the Bollinger's push outwards, they are diverging away from each other. That in of itself is telling you we've got this underlying uh, bullish momentum. Where is candle, where the candle sitting with this bullish momentum? They're sitting in zone one, right? And you can see um, that the RSR here has popped 50. Uh, this shouldn't, I don't think this is a surprise for us. It's taken a while for the uh, charts to unfold, but I think we've been on top of the direction that we have been expecting the breakouts to be. So um, we'll just carry on mo monitoring that. The idea is, um, the idea is uh, the fundamentals. Let's always, let's just backtrack to the fundamentals. What does it mean that we've got weaker non-farm payrolls. It means that the uh, rate cuts that the Fed has put through have been working. 
and it means that they probably now carry on waiting and watching the data. They don't necessarily have to raise rates anymore. And we have to just see, um, it, it even takes a little bit of the sort of power behind higher for longer. I wouldn't say, I wouldn't say a tremendous amount of power has been siphoned out, but the fact of the matter is, it does seem to suggest that a lot of the heavy lifting that the Feds needed to be doing has already been done, okay? And that's what's giving a lift to um, the majors. That's what's pushing the uh, US dollar down. And that's potentially what's helping the risk side of the market. Let's take a look at, at a few more instruments. Let's take a look at gold. Gold, very interesting here, tends to move, move opposite to the US dollar. Um, it hasn't been doing that for the last few weeks. Uh, the US dollar has been moving up and gold has been moving up simultaneously. But now, now that the US dollar has broken down, let's just see what's happening on the gold side of things. Okay. Um, interestingly, gold is now just hanging on, uh, just hanging on to the border between zone one and zone two. Doesn't the the breakdown in gold? Uh, sorry, the breakdown in the dollar doesn't seem to have carried through to gold, and that's because the correlation between gold and the US dollar had it should be negative. It should be negative. But just since the uh, geopolitics uh, and um, the Middle East conflict from the 7th of October, um, that seems to have pushed um, money into the safety of the dollar and the safety of gold, uh, causing a positive correlation. And that seems to still be holding, even though the dollar now has broken down following Friday's job, non-job um, I beg your pardon, non-farm payrolls or jobs data. I'm begging your pardon. Um, let's just keep an eye on gold here. It is above the 30-week exponential moving average. That 30-week exponential moving average is pointing up. And I'd be very interested to see if we get something like this. One, two, two, three, one, two. Because gold does seem to be, but the 2000 is acting as an absolute uh, key psychological level at the moment. So um, this is certainly one I think that we keep on our watch list and just see how it unfolds um, as gold moves. Okay, because I think now, uh, subject to correction, but it does seem that we've kind of hit perhaps a turning point when it comes to the US dollar. Uh, again, I want to just tag on subject to correction because we don't want to uh, get caught on the wrong side if um, gold does uh, uh, does start moving. So. Uh, but it does look as if that jobs data has been an important pivot in the direction um, of the dollar. Um, did I say that correctly? The jobs data on Friday being that important pivot. Uh, let's just take a look at some of the uh, risk markets. So we'll go NASDAQ, S&P, DAX. Okay, so let's go NASDAQ, S&P, DAX. We'll bring up NASDAQ first. And you can see that the NASDAQ here uh, just had a, a momentous week. It's taken it's uh, it's taken the index all the way to this down sloping trend line. We want to see if it can break above this down sloping trend line. That would be a positive development. And as long as the um, as long as the RSR holds above 50, okay, I think we will break above this trend line. And you can that, that 30 week moving average pointing up. Okay, so there does seem to be some sort of support bid that's come back in for the risk side of the markets, unsurprisingly, and we want to see if we break above this downsloping trend line. If we go through to our daily chart, well, we've just moved into zone one, okay? And the longer we stay in zone one, the longer that the daily RSR stays above 50, okay, the more bullish the index. Let's take a look at the S&P 500, and the S&P 500, I would suggest, is uh, a good-looking chart. You can see that it's actually uh, broken above this orange trend line. So the orange trend line, we can do away with, okay? It's broken it, 
So it did accelerate to the downside, um, but that acceleration to the downside seems to be undone. It's now uh, going to be challenging the uh, green downward sloping trend. Now, take a look at a steady week exponential moving average. It's pushing up. Take a look at the RSR. It's popping. Okay, it's just it's popping above 50. The longer it holds above 50, the more bullish the underlying momentum. So we've got to watch it RSI. If it dips below 50, well, that would be that would be significant. And then we've got to uncover why it would be dipping. But at the moment, it's holding. And if we take a look at the daily chart here, it's pushed into zone one. Okay. And you've got the positive underlying momentum. Let's just see what is going to be. Um, so what the charts are going to be suggesting for DAX. So this will be the the last chart we look at this morning. Let's just bring up DAX and we'll do um, a top down here as well. And um, let's go through to the weekly to start off with. So again, a very big week for the DAX. Uh, we're now challenging this downward sloping trend line. Uh, the DAX is lagging the American indices. Why do I say it's lagging the American indices? Because the American indices are above their 30 week exponential moving average, and that exponential moving average is pushing up. It's not the case with the DAX. The DAX is lagging. On a relative strength basis, it's lagging. It's got to get above the green sloping uh, trend line, and it's got to get above the uh, black EMA. And uh, to do that, it's going to have to pop above 50. So it has turned up. We don't quite have the bullishness on the DAX yet. It looks like it's coming. Okay. It looks like we have tilted towards risk on, um, but there's no doubt we're lagging on the Euro European side. The US side of the markets are stronger. Uh, and if we take a look at the daily chart, you can see that we are trying to get into zone one. We're not quite there yet. The American uh, indexes are already in zone one, aren't they? So um, in terms of approaching stronger indexes, well, that would be the American over the DAX. Okay, so that's just um, a very interesting um, sort of dichotomy between uh, the uh, American side of the Atlantic and the European side of the Atlantic. Okay. Are there any questions? Any questions, please go ahead and type those in. Uh, Russ saying in, in the big, this is probably a counter trend for US dollar, the long awaited dip. I'm not so sure it's counter trend. It could be transitional here. Uh, I think, Raj, what we've got to be looking at is the interest rates. Are the interest rates moving higher? Or are they going to be moving lower? Uh, if they're moving higher, yes, then it's a counter trend. If they're going to be lower, maybe it's transitional. Uh, if they're going to hold, maybe we're entering into some sort of equilibrium. But my expectations, and again, I'm going to tag on that subject to correction, I think we're tilting or tending towards transition. I think so. But I'm not sure. I, I, you know, we've got to be, uh, again, very careful with the way we are analyzing it. Carry on doing what we're doing. All right, guys. Thanks, Howard. Appreciate it. All right, guys. Let's wrap up here. Let's wrap up here. Thank you very much. We will uh, do it again tomorrow morning. Have a great day ahead, guys. And we'll shall speak tomorrow. Bye.